Hello and welcome to another development block of Project Third Eye VR. Let's check if the recording is running, and it is. Now I'm taking on the headset. Ha! Ah, it's been another week of developing the game, and now I'm going to talk about all the changes that I did during the week. Okay, so first of all, as you can see, there are now a lot more props in this scene. Um, at first, uh, I'm going to spawn a few web shooters, so I can show you all the things that I did very quickly, very quick. Uh, web shooter. One and two. Okay, we got two web shooters, and I'm also going to take on the snowboard. So I already got the snowboard on. Oh yeah! Look at these rams that I made on in Blender. Ridiculously, they look terrible because I'm really a absolute beginner when it comes to 3D modeling. Yeah, I really do suck. Okay, so the first thing that I want to talk about is these little props that I made. Okay, maybe I should take off the snowboard. <laughs> or if I... yeah, that, that seems to work. Okay, as you can see, we got uh, this slow sign right here. It's physics-based rendering, PBR, but uh, for some reason it only looks PBR from this direction. And this just looks like a base map for some reason. Okay, so for context, uh, I made these models to have a to develop a workflow when it comes to 3D modeling and especially these simple objects. Because uh, as you may know, I'm not really uh, good at 3D modeling or I, I don't really know shit about 3D modeling, to be honest. And it's really annoying to always have to reach out to 3D modelers when it comes to the simplest things like the slow sign. And that's why I try to try to practice it a bit. For example, I made these wood here and the fences over there. Oh, let's get to the fences. Yeah, so I made these simple fences. Basically, I just made a couple of wood materials in Blender. Uh, wood objects, wood props, like these axes or these fences, or this fence. And then uh, I just put a... or these snow breakers right there. Yeah, I also made these. And then I put a, a UV, unwrapped them in Blender, and then put a smart material in, onto them in Substance Painter. So they all use the same material. Uh, yeah, so that's what I did. Uh, they look okay, I guess. But, uh, yeah, it's very good to have a simple workflow to make these small props myself because it usually takes a lot longer to reach out to a 3D artist and tell them what you need than just to do it yourself in 10 minutes. So, um, yeah, it's nice to know uh, how to do stuff. I can tell you that. Okay, so um, this anchor lift, I reworked it a little bit. Now it's, uh, it works a little bit more consistent and also it's more performant. I baked these two objects, so the anchor and this, uh, this object right there, the handle. I baked them into a skin mesh renderer and then put LEDs on them so they are more performant, performance, uh, more performant graphics wise. Uh, yeah, and that's why we can have 25 of these anchor lifts in the scene and 25 of the chair lifts and it still works with 72 FPS on Quest, which I think is really nice. Of course, we don't have real-time lighting on Quest, uh, don't get me wrong. But uh, yeah, 25 of these guys because they are also not simulated at far distances. So uh, they are only physical in the range of, I don't know, 50 meters, and then they turn into kinematic. Uh, same for the chair lift, so it's uh, op optimized graphically and physically. Yeah, so I made a few props for the map. Uh, also, I made these obstacles right there. And uh, optimized the ski lifts. And another thing that I did was these clouds right here. So this is basically just a plane with a cloud texture on it. And these clouds are then moving. So as you can see, the texture just offsets over time. And that makes it look like it's uh, moving. 
And also, uh, as you can see, the clouds, I hope you can see this, are about the height of this support right there. So we could go up there, and that's what we're going to do. And then we are in the clouds, literally. Okay, so let's try that. I'm trying to enter the ski lift without dying. I better go into slow-mo. We have more control. Yeah, and the ski lift is being modeled right now. So this is just a prototype. Uh, a prototype model that I got for free on the internet, but now it's modeled properly by modelers. Okay. Yeah. I hope you can see this, but we're moving in the clouds right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're almost in the clouds. And now see what happens to the render distance when we get into the cloud. Yeah, it dynamically changed based on our height. So now we're in the cloud, basically, and we have a very short uh, render distance. Yeah, cool. Okay. Uh, I'm going to enter the chair right now. And once we go up here, as you can see, now the sky basically opened up. Or, uh, yeah, we got through the clouds and we're over the clouds, basically. And, uh, yeah, we can see the sun, which is very cool, I think. And what's even better is if we look down, we can look down on these clouds, which I think uh, looks really cool. And it, all, it also is advantageous if you want to render a lot of objects, because uh, yeah, if you want to have a lot of objects, because we don't need to render all these objects, because we can barely see them through the clouds. So this goes both directions. So we have a top layer and a lower layer that we can put full of objects and then uh, only render these that are actually visible. So I can put the LODs to a uh, shorter distance, which is nice. Okay. So uh, now at the top of this hill, there's not that much to do here. So we have a ski track here. I already showed that in the last video. We got a ski track there. We got a uh, another ski track right here. And I uh, also made this rail here. That is absolutely impossible to use. So I'm definitely going to change that. Yeah, I think that's it for the new map. So these are all the changes in the new map. Uh, but I also did a few new vehicles. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Okay, now let me show you the vehicles and the mechanics that I made. And the first mechanic that I want to show you is this thing. And this is called Exo Arm. And it basically is a backpack mechanic. So this is the backpack. So it's obviously just a prototype, a prototype model. And then uh, these robotic arms mimic my hand positions, which I think is really cool, actually. And I can even push myself up with these arms. And then I have, uh, yeah, I don't know, it's, it's like gorilla tech, basically, essentially. Yeah, and then I can move on these arms, or I could spawn a few Gen Zs and beat up some Gen Zs with superpower. With, with supernatural power. Ah, they can't stand on the... Uh, they can't stand on the... On the... Uh, no material. So let's get to a point where it's not that steep. So they don't... Slip all the way down this hill. Yeah, it's not super strong. It's basically, it's, uh, it's the maximum amount of strength that I could pull out of this because it has very long leverage. Then the uh, physics simulation tends to break. Okay, so let's spawn three Gen Zs. Take on the seat, uh, the backpack. And yeah, they still move. I need to make the friction higher on the feet. That looks terrible. Okay. Let's try to beat up this Gen Z right here. That looks terrible. I really need to change the friction. Okay. And uh, the whole arm has collision, as you can see. It's not just the, the hand, it's also the arm. Okay, so let's go. So, yeah, we have supernatural strength, basically. Let's delete them for performance reasons. Okay, perfect. Now, we have another vehicle, and this vehicle is an F1 car. 
because you guys really wanted an F1 car, and that's basically how it looks. So, uh, just your regular Formula One car. And that's how it sounds. Really aggressive. That's the steering. Very low poly. Ah, so it's not that easy to uh, drive it on the snow. Maybe not the best map to show this. Yeah, and it has like, I don't know, I think it was 500 newtons of torque or kilo newtons of torque. I don't know, I forgot the number. But it's really fast and it's really powerful. That's what it is. So we got the F1 car. We got the prototype for the Exo Arms. We got a ton of new props in this map, and I also remade the ski tracks a little bit. I experimented on obstacles, and uh, I'm really hyped to get the model for the ski lift, so I can finally have uh, the ski lift completed, complete the ski lift. And that's everything that I can show you right now. Follow the development of Project Fleet, whatever. And see you in the next development vlog.